The next topic is LTE frequency reuse. We are going to start with the introduction. As we all know, frequency is a limited resource. So it is not practically possible to have a large number of frequencies. And operators purchase these frequencies according to their needs. So to fully use spectrum efficiency, the same frequency has been used again and again at different locations at the same time and at a particular distance. Frequency reuse concept is different in all the technologies. In GSM, in same cell, all the three sectors are provided with different frequencies so that there is not a possibility of co-channel or adjacent channel interference. So the same frequency is used at a particular distance called frequency reuse distance so that there is not any interference. Similarly, in CDMA, frequency reuse is one that is in all the three sectors, same frequency has been used as users are provided with different codes. But in 4G, there are number of bands and according to those bands, frequencies can be purchased. For instance, if 1920 to 1980 MHz and 2110 to 2170 FDT band is purchased, having bandwidth of 20 MHz, same frequency is allocated to all the sectors of the cell. Next is frequency reuse types. First is frequency reuse of 1. So as we all know, frequency reuse implies using the same frequencies over different geographical areas. If we have a 25 megahertz band, then we can have 125 GSM channels and 1000 time multiplexed users in a given geographical area. Now, if we want to increase the number of users, we would have to reuse the same frequency band in a geographically separated area. The technique usually adopted is to use a fraction of total frequency band in each of cell such that no two neighbor cells use the same frequency. Typically, the frequency band is divided into three or seven cells. The division of the frequency band in the smaller chunks reduces the system capacity. For example, one cell with 25 megahertz bandwidth would have much higher capacity than seven cells having 3.5 megahertz each. To overcome this problem, a frequency reuse of one has been proposed. That is, each cell has the fully system bandwidth. The problem of co-channel interference at the cell boundaries is resolved by dedicating a small chunk of the available spectrum for the cell edges. Next is fractional frequency reuse. In this, the cell area is divided into two regions. A central region where all of the frequency band is available and a cell edge area where only a small fraction of the spectrum is available. The spectrum dedicated for the cell edge may also be used in the central region if it is not being used at the cell edge. The lack of spectrum at the cell edge may result in much reduced Shannon capacity for that region. This is overcome by allocating high power carriers to the users in this region, thus improving the SINR and hence the Shannon capacity. This also increases the throughput and spectrum efficiency is also improved in 4G. Bandwidths provided are 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 15 or 20 megahertz. So 20 megahertz is the maximum bandwidth. Number of carriers are aggregated if frequency has to be increased from 20 megahertz. This process is called carrier aggregation. For each and every carrier, there is a space in between which is called channel raster. In 4G LTE systems, channel raster is of 100 kHz. Modulation techniques used in 4G is MCS, that is Modulation Coding Scheme. It has 30 codes for mod modulation. So codes from 0 to 9 uses QPSK that is quadrature phase shift keying 10 to 17 uses 16 QM and from 18 to 24 uses 64 QM. So this is all in this lecture. Thanks.